Hey everybody, to join the league season number 3, it's gonna be a 2 game series between Myth Trust and Zero Latitude. Also, if you're not aware of what division this is, it is of course Asia Division 1. Of course, we are Hefla TV, I'm Coacher, and I am joined by Mr. Blackadder today. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So, are, do you have any expectations or predictions coming into this match? Hmm, I... I... That's an interesting one, because I look at these two teams, and Myth Trust have been around a very long time. They have quite the string of victories, and they have the experience behind them, and I don't actually know Zero Latitude that well as a team, so my expectation is Myth Trust will at least have a good advantage in the game. Yeah, they probably are the more known and more established team, to say the least, I guess. And Zero Latitude, I'm not too sure if they're working with stand-ins or what, but definitely from their names. I mean, I casted them a little bit in Season 2 and one player I know from them is already missing, so must be going on some, through some roster changes themselves. Although Myth so far actually in this season, I do believe they played two games and lost both of them 2-0. One against Titans, so that's not a huge loss I guess, but the other was against Kingdom, a new team to Division 1 as well. So we'll see if they can just finally get their groove in this season. Mm. Well, it's an interesting one so far, bands and picks wise at least. We've got the Brewmaster and Ancient Apparition for Mythras, and that's a combo we don't generally see in terms of a support with a Brewmaster. Equally though, flip side of the coin, you've got the Death Prophet and the Shadow Shaman for Zero Latitude, so they're certainly signaling that they want to go push heavy in this game. Yeah, I mean, and usually it's always so scary to go up against just the Death Ball kind of push, and even if Zero Latitude don't go for more heroes that can push, actually, speaking of it, the Lycan was overlooked, although it seems like they want to go for a push, so... I mean, is it just me or does it feel like Lycan is beginning to get overlooked more and more often? It, it varies on the region, since we still see it oftenly banned in, uh, in Europe and in North America, whereas in the Southeast Asian games that I've cast myself, I've not seen it banned or picked so much. It's, um, I guess, a region area kind of thing. Yeah, it might very well be. And actually, Shiro Latitude, they ban out a Pagna themselves as well. I guess Myth Trust, if they have the Ice Blast connecting on somebody with the Nether Blast to follow up, it can be devastating, but now we see the Lycan. Myth Trust, I guess they went kind of on a limb, being like, if Shiro Latitude didn't go for the Lycan immediately, they might not want to go for it at all, but Shiro Latitude, other plans in mind, and Shadow Shaman, Death Prophet, and Lycan. How does one compete? How do you stop that push? Do you go for Tinker, Keeper of Light? Uh, Keeper of Light, I, I highly doubt. He's too squishy and will die to the Death Prophet's silence and just in general the physical damage from the Lycan. But the uh, the heroes that really spring to mind, the team fighters that can get in the face of these heroes. You've got the Brewmaster, which does bring some control. Potentially could be mid. I'm hoping it's mid. And then we could see the likes of maybe a Tide Hunter on the offlane and try to out team fight Zero Latitude. In actually, Myth, they banned out the Tide Hunter themselves as well here as the fourth one. So, I mean, I guess they could go for a Centaur. Centaur and Ancient Depression was a combo that used to be just out there quite often, but they go for a Rubik as a secondary support. I mean, Fate Bolt is decent ish in just dragging the creep wave away or just trying to kill it off. But I'm not too sure if Myth have just given away too much to Zero Latitude at the moment. Well, from where from where I stand, at least draft advantage, my opinion is Zero Latitude have a fairly big advantage of that Lycan, but I would say if Myth go for the team fight route, maybe even the rare pick of the Elder Titan to try to hold back these pushes on towers, they could then look for the setup, but how do you really set up on a Lycan? Maximum move speed, plus the silence of a Death Prophet, and of course Exorcism, and fighting under Exorcism, as we all well know and hate, is not a good idea. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, at the moment, the only stun, or at least the only reliable stun on Myth, is going to be the Telekinesis on the Rubik. So they have very little to deal with it. The pro, I mean, Brewmaster is at least a tanky hero who can maybe just go stand under the Mass Serpent Wars, tank them up while they're trying to kill them off, to at least slow the push down somewhat. But I guess Myth Trust, they still have a couple of heroes to come. They, I think, like you mentioned as well, they're probably best chance is to pick heroes that can just team fight and do it as early as possible and just try to win while getting an XP advantage for example usually push lineups they like to group together 
So if you have some heroes to just delay the push while the other two lanes, for example, are still farming, getting some XP, getting some valuable items, maybe the blink daggers for initiations, they might be able to hold off the push, but it's gonna be hard to say the least. But Zero Latitude, the fourth hero at least, isn't an extremely push-oriented one, but a disruptor, he can completely deal with the brewmaster though if he catches him in the static storm. Not only that, when it comes to defending towers, you TP in, you get glimpsed back, and then you've wasted your TP, and you're not going to be able to fight at that tower. It's a really good pick if you want to push into towers early, because any rotation can be then punished by glimpse. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, usually the drafts, they they don't feel as one-sided. I mean, yes, pushing strategies don't always work out, but the other team just has to get an advantage extremely early on if they want to be able to withstand it, and they go for a bristle back now. I mean, it's a tanky hero, but does it offer enough as far as counter push goes? He can also just go in, get one quill spray off and track the creep away from the tower. But if there are mass up towards exorcism and the wolves of the lycan, those of course, they don't just go randomly like NPCs do after the enemy hero. So I don't know, man. I'm a little bit skeptical about myth trust. Hopefully they can prove me wrong here. Well, they need something that can stand and really deal out the CC. Something big, something strength-oriented, I should think, to be able to, well, withstand the damage coming out of Zero Latitude as well. Um, Elder Titan is a little bit too squishy for that fact, but it wouldn't go badly in this one. Other heroes, really, that Myth can use that can stand and fight as they need, considering they need an offliner, maybe something that offers positional disruption, a clockwork, maybe. That's assuming the Brewmaster is, of course, mid lane. Yeah, the clockwork possibly wouldn't be too bad but if they go for one I actually see them possibly having issues even going into the late game because Mifter as they themselves they have almost zero push at the moment so even if they take a fight against zero latitude can they push and actually take objectives off of that and even if they would what's gonna carry them into the late game Lycan can be a huge late game threat as of course can be the death prophet mm. I, I... I don't know for Mithras, honestly. They need something that can A, farm, B, be tanky enough, and C, bring some CC to the table. Otherwise, Mr. Uh, Mithras are going to fall off in terms of effectiveness, most likely around the 30-minute mark. Because right now, they've got nothing that goes late that can stand versus Death Prophet and Lycan. And for late-game forces that can also push towers and do a lot early game, they are two of the best. Oh, wow. Well, we'll just have to see. Maybe their fifth pick will just completely blow our minds and... Be like, how did we not see that coming? Or I don't know, maybe, just maybe they're gonna go for something like that. But at the moment, Zero Latitude, they are lacking themselves an offlaner. Myth Trust, of course, did pan out the Nature Prophet as well, wisely. So if there was an Nature Prophet on top of what Zero Latitude already had, I just called GG straight out almost. But well, come to think of it, for Myth Trust, this potentially mid Brewmaster, aggressive tri lane, bristleback. That'll try to deny some of the uh, some of the presence the Lycan can have, and then they can look for maybe a safe lane Alchemist. Alchemist has a good stun, fairly tanky, can deal right click, but late game is the Alchemist going to be enough versus the Death Prophet and the Lycan is what comes to mind here, and especially if it gets caught out by the silence of Disruptor, Puck, or Death Prophet. You mean the Alchemist it could work if he just had the space to farm and get six slotted way before any of Zero Latitude's heroes do? That's probably the biggest strength of an alchemist, a core one at least. Mm. You just get so scarily super early on. But with the amount of push Hero Latitude has, might be a little bit hard, but to be honest, Myth Trust, what do they have to lose? I mean, they kind of have to try to go for a strategy as such, maybe even. But Hero Latitude, their last pick was a puck, so they actually don't only have push now, they have a pretty good amount of just team fight control. And with the Disruptor Static Storm and the Puck Waning Rift, and actually even the silence from the Death Prophet, they potentially have a lot to just deal with the Brewmaster as well here. Mm, that is very true, and if Brew can't get his Primal Split off, he falls off in terms of effectiveness vastly. But uh, one thing that the chat are actually calling for, they're reckoning there's going to be a Morphling for Myth Trust, which has its flaws, especially early game when he's going to be fairly squishy, and you look up against the Team Zero Latitude have, it's an early game lineup, this is really going to be very painful on the towers. I mean, honestly, Zero Latitude can have all the towers down within 20 minutes if they go aggressive. And they're going to go for the last pick, Centaur. So they're going to bring some stun, some CC, but is it enough late game? I mean, 
Actually, the Morphling was banned as the fifth one as well by Zero Latitude. Lakel really loves himself, the Morphling, otherwise, but me, the Centaur, and you voiced your concerns. Will it be enough late game? I mean, I have seen Centaurs just be beasts in late game and actually kind of carry it, maybe for like Mjolnir buff on him, Heart of the Rask, Shiva Scar for the extra armor and the tank. But at the moment, I mean, Mif Trust. Will they be able to even get a fast enough Blink Dagger on the center for him to be of use? Oh, well, wow. the Blink Dagger on center, this is, this is one that is always a curious discussion because I've sat and talked with Solon from Coast for several times because I've, I've been passing them for a very long time and his centaur is probably one of the best I've seen. He always tries to say, if you can get your Blink Dagger between the 10 to 12 minute mark, you are on time. Any earlier than that, it is good. But that assumes you're in a, a lane where you can come forward and you can get the occasional CS. And, your return will ex essentially punish the enemy for any attempts at aggression on the centaur. But you look at what uh, Zero Latitude have, and I can't think the centaur is going to get much. It's going to be a, a delayed blink dagger, in my opinion, for this game. You mean, I guess if actually in the offlane against Puck, he can do fairly well there. But yeah, man, it's, it's going to be a little bit hard. But them myth at the moment, going for an aggressive tri lane, like you also just mentioned the possibility of. I think it's probably the best choice that they have at this point in time, but to introduce the lineups to you guys, for Zero Latitude on the Radiant side, a stand-in, Promisi, playing on the Lycan, leaving La Vida to play the Disruptor with the last on the tri lane will be Spica on the Shadow Shaman, leaving the mid lane to play, be played by Vance on the Death Prophet and the off lane is gonna be Suragan Lontong on the Puck. And on the flip side of that coin, for the Myth Trust, we've got... Uh... I'm going to pronounce that he's so horribly wrong. I, I want to say uh, Gok on the Centaur Warrunner. I, I'll probably pronounce it as that for the rest of the game. In the mid lane, we have My Pro on the Brewmaster. Over on the aggressive tri lane, we've got Noki on the Rubik, and they're taking a very aggressive posture and maybe looking to try to catch someone out while they're warding. We also have uh, Lakalel. Help me out here. How it's Lakels. Lakels. There we go. <laughs> we've got Lakels on the uh, Bristleback, and finally, we have SD on the Ancient Apparition. Actually the Centaur, at least from, from pre previous games I've casted off them, it's just KYT. He just added the uh, cock, however you pronounce it, later on, so it should be KYT just. Okay, so it's KYT on the Centaur. That makes my life so much easier. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, when I was trying to go through Zero Latitude's lineup, I was like, fuck my life. <laughs> I'm not, no, no way I'm gonna get these names right. Well, it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a game of Dota if the players weren't making it hard for us in some way, shape, or form. Well, that's at least they keep us casing and always making a meantime, move. aggression, oh. telekinesis up onto the death prophet, and now they're going to try to bring her down quickly. But is there enough to escape it? I don't think there is. There's too much damage coming through, and first blood goes the way of SD on the ancient apparition. Well, to be honest, if they start like this, they definitely have a chance, but. They need to just keep on with the aggression and actually really love that Lakels went for Vicious Nasal Go early on. Just early minus armor is so valuable, especially if you have I mean, the physical combined with the magical chilling touch of course, giving uh, that extra. It is a very strong combination and now we got another Telekinesis going on to La Vida this time. More Nasal Go being thrown but they're not going to be able to bring her down this time I don't think. But they will get the counter kill onto, no uh, onto Noki and an exchange there which... Mistrust are going to have to be very wary of because a few kills going the way of this death prophet and that's going to be very unpleasant in terms of early Yule Scepter among other things. But we do actually think that maybe Zero Latitude expected the aggressive tri lane to come out and thus sending the Lycan mid lane. Usually death prophet against Brewmaster mid lane would be an extremely good matchup whereas Lycan in a tri lane versus an aggressive tri lane definitely wouldn't be able to do as much. And of course death prophet having the range advantage. Overall the entire, the entire tri lane of Zero Latitude is ranged now, so that's already a huge advantage coming into it. I, I think they may have expected it, yes. Now we've got another bit of aggression. Telekinesis up onto the Death Prophet once more, and the negative armor is just stacking up. She falls so quickly right now, and this tri lane from Mythros is paying off at the minute. It's getting kills onto uh, Lekels, which is the best thing possible. Yeah, and Rubik, I think he actually started with boots of speed as well. I'm not 100% sure, but. Both supports have the boots, and just him getting he into did. range for telekinesis is so huge. He started with the boots of speed, and, and honestly, it's the right decision for this one. Unless the Ruby get in and get the positioning for that telekinesis, and if you don't have the positioning for telekinesis, 
you will get picked off in exchange, and that's not what you want. The movement speed is everything to this lane, considering a death prophet can be fairly fast as she levels up that witchcraft. Yeah, and at the moment, I mean, just myth also blocking out the pool camp makes it so that zero light to they can do almost nothing in the bottom lane. Mid lane, even the Lycan was in a little bit of trouble. My pro having a double damage rune. He's getting chased now, but he should be fine. I mean, he has two bottle charges still, and the glimpse comes out, but <laughs> I don't think it's going to do much. Even if they block him in there, it'll be very hard to bring him down, at least without massive investment from... Bottom lane, they get the like telekinesis him. once again, he's probably gonna go down. Cold feet, not even used, I mean, doesn't even have his skill into it, but Ice Vortex, the slows. This, this trial lane just working out wonders like Hells, though, is a little bit low on mana now. Uh, it's one of the strengths of the Brewmaster, the mana... Uh, sorry, not Brewmaster, Bristleback. The mana issue is just the main thing you need to address. You can do that in so many ways, especially if you have two supports who are most likely going to be getting the Arcanes. That can fix the problem on its own. Or, if you, you mention negative armor, early negative armor is good. A Medallion isn't actually that bad a pickup on a Bristleback. Yeah, actually it wouldn't be too bad at all. I mean, getting some extra mana regeneration yourself. And if super early on you have the addition of minus six armor plus the Vicious Nasal Guru starting to stack, I can see it being just way too devastating for Zero Latitude to handle, but look at the supports now. They are both smoked up and looks like they want my pro in the mid lane. Well, it'll be a very good kill if they can get him, but the problem is this Brewmaster is going fairly uh, level advantage, fairly heavy on the level advantage already, and with three points up in the Thunderclap, he can do a lot of new damage, but he's used it already, and now in comes the rotation. The CC is there from Speaker and Levida, but can they bring him down in time? With the Aftershock, they certainly can. Yeah, just the howl gives you so much extra, but even the puck was rotating in, not entirely necessary. I'm not too sure if he was trying to come in to check the rune as it is anyway at the same time. But it's a possibility, but maybe they were just being more cautious because a brewmaster, especially if the brewmaster is level 5, could get level 6 as the team votes going on can escape with a primal split. So it just could be a case of investment to ensure safety. It very well might be, I mean, but Center of course, he was pretty happy with the puck going away, just getting some free farm and... He's actually winning this lane so hard, but he might get ganked now. Speaker is coming in. Will he get the shackles? Of course he will. And this is going to be an easy kill going the way of, most importantly, uh, Z Zurangan on that puck. And if he can get that early blink dagger, again, positional advantage is going to be everything to both of these lineups. And if the blink dagger comes available in a short amount of time, it's going to be absolutely perfect for zero latitude. And maybe they can recover some of the things they've lost from their tri lane. Yeah, I mean, what I wanted to say though is, I mean, just the center of the last, it's 28 and 13 compared to Pucks 11 and 3. So before that kill, the center was just absolutely dominating that lane. But the men, the wolves. The yeah, wolves the wolves. So are, the wolves right now, they're scouting out these supports and they think they're safe. They're revealed and they've each got a wolf chasing after them. So in the meantime, my pro will chip away at the tower. The supports have been scouted, so I'm expecting rotations in, and we do get a rotation in from the puck, but is it going to be enough alone? I don't think so. He comes to like him with the shapeshift and a good initiation from the puck with the uh, waning rift is enough to clean up one, but in comes the primal split. They're looking for more. Will the uh, SD get out? Yes, he does. But now you've got primal split invested against a lichen, and a lichen will evade the primal split panda bruma brulings quite easily. Now you get the investment from speaker as well, but. Can you really kill the Brewmaster off the back of this? With the Waning Rift, certainly you damn well can, and two more right clicks should spell his doom. But his bottling up might be able to survive this. Do we have another Illusionary Orb? Yes, we do. I don't see him getting out of this long, not with the Orb ready. And with that coming in, one right click uphill, doesn't miss, and Zurangan will take the kill. Man, the Brewmaster could have been lucky. The Reshi Noki got the kill on yeah. Lycan. What? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how, I'm not sure why the Lycan was uh, messing around with low HP versus the Rubik. You've got to respect the Fade Bolt. Yeah, I think, I mean, Rubik, he actually snatched the regeneration rune from the Lycan, but oh, Edersho comes in one more right click. And mm. well, with the Wolves help, the Wolves actually get the counter kill, so getting some revenge. But all in all, that mid fight was just excellent, although my pro is kind of coming. If he gets the Thunderclap, it's going to be the death, but the Hex is there. My pro is faster, He's though. in range. He's in range this entire time. The, the range on Thunderclap is huge. You cannot underestimate it, and it does so much damage, plus that 50%. So like one more right-click, and that's going to spell his doom. The glimpse, just going to put him into safety. Meantime, bot lane, aggression starting again. In comes the nasal goose stacks, as well as the chilling touch, and they're doing some good damage into the Death Prophet, but no, the illusionary orb comes out, and now we can see a turnaround. Puck invests the Dream Call. Can he get SD? No, he can't. Not before he goes down, and the Death Prophet will equally take a fall. So that's a that's a two-for-one trade in favor of the Myth Trust. And, I mean, they lose two core heroes for one support. 
The Illusion Orb, I do think it missed Lakel, so they had almost no chance of getting the Bristle back down there, and they went a little bit too deep, and giving away way too much in that engagement, but one important thing that actually happened in the mid lane fight was that when the Puck came in, he was only level 5, but them getting the early kill, I think it was on the Rubik, with the Lycan just popping the shapeshift, he got his level 6, which allowed him to use the Dream Coil, and Ancient Depression, although he TP'd out, the TP broke the Dream Coil and he was brought low enough before that, so he TP'd into the base and died because of it. So Fair just enough. small things happening, but that one myth, I mean, they are behind one kill, but just this Bristleback having the farm already, having the Vanguard, it makes him so tanky early on, and that's exactly what the Bristleback needs, man. If he falls behind early, he's probably gonna be useless the entire game, but at the moment, he's number one in the net worth, and actually by a pretty huge margin. Well, and while we've been talking about the mid and the bot lanes, we haven't really looked at the top lane much. And KYT, he's farming up fairly well. At this rate, he's going to be online for about an 11-minute bling dagger. And that could spell the doom of uh, Zero Latitude here. We all know how powerful the dagger can be on the Bottom lane, they Prophet in trouble once again, but TPs are coming. Can they stop Lakel somehow? Do they have any slow skin? Anti field actually catches Lakel. Even right, the the disruption is going to bring him back uh, with the glimpse and one more right click could spell his doom, but no, he's going to be safe with that stampede. Equally though, in comes the Lycan, going to start chipping away at Noki and will clean him up inside the jungle. And my pro comes in as well, trying to get a revenge kill, but maybe over, uh, overestimating his own damage potential. Will escape with the haste rune in the meantime. I, mean, I almost want to say that the glimpse kind of saved the Bristleback at the moment. But we'll save mid lane, SD might go down. There's the Dream Quite actually used for the support as well. Illusion will connect and easy kill. Mm. Well, uh, Zurangan is finding the kills. This is the thing we have to point out. And he's also got a thousand gold in the bank, so he's going to be looking for that Blink Dagger in a few minutes' time. Maybe less if he can keep acquiring these kills at the rate he is. This puck was an offlane puck, but certainly doing the work in this game. But now comes the inevitable push from the Radiant side. Mass Serpent War is invested, the Lycan is here. The towers will fall and they cannot really defend this right now. They can't fight under the Mass Serpent Wards. And that's the biggest issue really for me is that even though they've been holding their own so far, getting some counter kills and whatnot, and the Bristleback farming up well, I mean Zero Latitude, they were just biding their time, getting their level 6s going. Of course, just the Death Prophet has been just heavily gimped at the moment. But it's just a matter of time if they just get the towers. They're gonna get the global gold, which will allow everybody to just kind of catch up. Mm. Well, that catch up time is going to be very important. But uh, while that's going on, Lycan finding extra gold here in the jungle, and he is almost got his Vlads. He's only missing 200 gold. It had 100 gold, and he has Vladimir's. Which could be signifying for a smoke and an early Roshan attempt, maybe, or just forcing more towers down beforehand. The mid tower taking some damage. Top lane could be another target. And of course, we've not seen much action here on the top lane. You know I mean, KYT has been sitting there for at least a minute now with his Blink Tiger finished. They were oh. expecting somebody to come in, I man. It, it's only logical. The Death Prophet mm. was hanging around, but I guess maybe they smelled the danger coming out they were like okay center he's been farming on the top lane the entire game only helping out with stampede probably he's gonna have his blink dagger by now he does have his blink dagger he he had it for a good 30 seconds now he's it's a very good thing as well considering now we've got the aggression potential there from the center we don't have the blink available on as we see mass tp's going down to the bot lane they're going to look for zarin uh Zurangan, and he could tend to go down here but in comes levita trying to bring down lakels and Will manage to do so with one more right click and the help of the Lycan. But in comes an AI Ice Blast. Can it connect on anyone? Yes, it does. It connects on three. And this could kill them. Levita will die to the Shatter. Will Zuragan, though. He will survive it just. He was he managed to survive it by 30 health. Man, cutting in close. But yeah, Ice Blast definitely at least helping them get one pick, kill. But all in all, man, like else, he went so deep trying to kill off the Puck. But Puck, of course, he lose your orb and got himself to safety just barely. But there's double blink dagger now, Brewmaster and KYT on the center, they both have it. And both of those items probably will be just surprising to Zero Latitude. I'm hoping for their sake that they're not going to overextend at the moment, but of course Myth. The first time you show off your blink daggers, that's pretty much the most crucial one. Well, here we go, they're going to go straight on to Vans on the Death Prophet in the mid lane, and then comes an Ice Blast as well to ensure the kill. Is it going to be needed? Well, it's not needed, but AA will pick up the gold for it. Well, that was a really pretty fast kill. Of course, Prime Split and cooldown now. Lycan gets thrown up in the air as well, Lakel. He can tank it up for a really long time if he really wants to. They have Mass Serpent Wars, though. KYT, oh, the hoof stomp misses. 
That's one of the problems with uh, the center of Tikan time. It's going to be very rough. And now you've got Lakels getting ward trapped and a static storm. He's not going to have a chance at survival on that one. And over aggression, maybe trying for the Lycan a little too hard. And Lycan did have metamorphosis that entire, sorry, shapeshift that entire time. And he would have just been able to run away, in all honesty. Even with the Hoofstomp double edge combo, the damage is not enough to bring him down. To be honest, at the moment, to me, it feels like Myth Trust. They know their lineup is supposed to just fight early, get a huge advantage early on, and not let Zero Latitude push like this. And actually, they blink in, but he gets hexed before. Speaker will go down potentially, though, to the AA, but in comes the rotation. They're going to the Stampede, and can they bring down Bram Easy? I don't think they can. He's going to be well enough tanky, and SD is getting chewed up by those wolves in the meantime. But now you've got the double edge. In comes the Shapeshift, though, and the Brewmaster. Maybe they can with that kind of investment, but in comes Zuragan, and that's a big Dream Core stopping two. And this could be the turnaround that they need. Getting ready to come back in. Wolves come in. My pro will be the target. Shackled up and dead. Now you get the glimpse back onto the uh, centaur, but he's just going to blink out. He's safe. And now you got Lakels in the mix, but can Lakels do enough? He's tanky, sure, but he doesn't have the physical right click at this point. He had to opt for the Vanguard. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even if he does hit hard when he has enough warpath charges on him, he just can't really keep up. Vicious Nasal Go is the only form of slow for him. They just don't have the stun, especially to deal with the Puck and the Lycan, they, they're just gonna run away every single time almost. And even the Death Prophet with points into Witchcraft, having the face boots, they're just all so mobile on their heroes. It's zero latitude. They are ahead, actually looking at the graphs as well. It's only 1000 gold lead for them, XP 1500, but considering that zero latitude, they used to be almost free, 2500 ahead themselves. It's just, they started off strong, but at the moment, they don't really have a proper answer, and just their overaggression has put them even farther behind. Mm, it's going to be a, a big problem, especially when the tier uh, tier ones start falling. You've still got a tier one up in the top lane and the tier twos. That's going to be a huge gold advantage, and we've said how quickly they can bring towers down. In the meantime, mid lane, Lakel's messing around with Bramisi, and Bramisi doesn't have shapeshift at this point. So if he stays and gets this kill, that would be huge. But in comes the TP, forcing Lakel's to retreat at this point. And wisely so, because it's the park. And now you get the Dream Coil invested. Are we going to see the turnaround though? Physical damage onto. Uh, Zuragan is not enough, but with Spica coming in, it's going to be more than enough with the CC. Top lane, however, you do get the Primal Split, and they get to bring the Death Prophet down in exchange. So a Bristleback for a Death Prophet, a pretty even trade in my mind. Yeah, and they actually get the Deny on the mid-tier one, or not the mid, the top-tier one as well. Mm. So, it was a little bit better for Myth. Since they got the mid tier one destroyed and it wasn't denied, but mid lane actually. Ice Blast comes in, that will be enough to bring down the Lycan, but you give the Lycan an inch, he'll take a mile. The tier two in the mid lane did almost die in that exchange, and you've still got Speaker here with his Master Servant Wards, and they could still get this tier two, which would be a huge advantage here for the side of zero, uh, zero latitude. But they missed the deny, so that extra gold will go into their pox. But now you've got the Brewmaster coming in, misses the crit, he gets hexed the same second, so AA will clean that one up. and. They ha this is the kind of nuke damage that uh, Zero Latitude, uh, sorry, Myth Trust have. They can obliterate a hero in one combo, but if they do that to, say, one of the supports, the Lycan is going to chew through people. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, they just need all of their spells, all of the initiation to just be on target for Myth. They really can't make too many mistakes at this point in time. They're already losing the map control. I mean, it's only 16 minutes in, but the more time continues, the stronger the push from Zero Latitude will come because they're just gonna get more levels. Although the Death Prophet is still only level 8. I mean, just having the level 11, having the level 2 Exorcism, the difference between level 1 and level 2 Exorcism is huge. So at least that's going for Myth at the moment. And they're going for Roshan as well. I do believe, yeah, Zero Latitude... It know. will be scouted, but I don't think they want to take a fight in the pit, at least not until Disruptor and Shadow Shaman get here. And we are seeing a mass convergence, so we could get a brawl in the pit, but Roshan is falling very quickly. This is going to be a very close one, but now you get the Dream Call initiation on the back. SD and Mipro get quite out of position. Now you get the, the Static Storm as well, but in comes the Stampede, trying to get what they can. The Lycan comes in as well. Lakel's determined to try to get Roshan, but he's already lost his Ancient Apparition, and now he's going to be the prime target, and this could be a Roshan Shan going the other way. It is picked up by the Lycan. So that is a massive disaster on the side of Mythtrust. They're getting cleaned up completely in the pit. They lose the Brewmaster as well. And I don't think Myth have an answer for this point at the minute. I was going to say before this fight kicked off, the push was coming. And in all honesty, for this game, Mythtrust have a problem. Time is the fire in which they will burn. The longer the game goes on, the more powerful the push becomes from this Lycan and Death Prophet. But off the back of a fight like that, Myth have lost their leg to stand on. 
to be honest, I mean, it's even worse because not only did the Aegis go to the Lycan, also the Roshan kill went to the Radiant side. So the Aegis wasn't even snatched, they got the gold, they got the XP for the Roshan kill on top of everything. I mean, this is just an absolute disaster. And the tier 3, it's probably going to get defended, but it's still going to drop down to less than half of HP. So They're not going to push into the tier 3, not with uh, Lakel's backup and Mypro, they can't risk it. The Brewmaster still does have Primal Split, and that's the main reason they've all backed off, just because of the sheer control that that can add to a fight. Then again, we do have almost a Necro 3 present onto Bramese now on the Lycan, which could be their go word. They're looking for that Necro 3 before they do a tier 3 push, in, my, in all honesty. To be honest, if he gets that Necro 3, they can easily go, maybe just push out the top tier 2 before. Just so, if you win a fight in the base, you actually have the ability to go for straight out Mega Creeps, because... From the pushing power that Zero Latitude has, we know that it's a possibility, but mid lane, they actually get Mid lane, the they will force the Aegis, but I don't think they're going to be able to kill him again. They, they're just going to be happy with that kind of investment to force the Aegis. I mean, it's... I guess that's <laughs> why the Aegis is there for as well. And he kept on to his shapeshift as well, didn't even try to, like, panic, use it and run away. Otherwise, could have been a disaster, just taken out twice, but... At the moment, looking at the graphs... They did kind of skyrocket all of a sudden after the last fight and the couple of towers going down. So, three and a half thousand gold lead now for Zero Latitude XP, four thousand as well. So, about a four to five k swing in both of them. Well, you've got to consider the extra gold that they did also get the killing blow on Roshan. So, that's a thousand gold for the team as well. As the tier two, another thousand gold and the kills. It really does add up, especially off the back of a team fight which, in all honesty, went any way but myth trusts. Actually, the puck looks to be going for a necro book as well at the moment, so double necro about to come out from them. And if they have a double necro, a death prophet, of course a lycan as well with that one necro, and the mass serpent ward, which are level 2 now as well, he's already level 11. I mean, Myth though, actually 19 minutes in, SD somehow on the ancient depression has himself an agony scepter. He has been getting a good few snipes off with his ultimate, so I can understand him getting that, but is it going to be enough? In my opinion, uh, the Aghanims on the Ancient Apparition is probably one of the most scary Aghanims upgrades in the entire game. It is a very powerful spell now, but is it enough? That is the big question. To be honest, I mean, if it hits all five heroes, it very well might be, but it's still only a level one ultimate, Aghanims or not. So the blast damage itself actually won't be as scary. Mm. So... We'll see in this fight now, if Zero Latitude, if they actually group up for that 5-man Ice Blast, yes, they might lose the fight. But even then, Lycan already is pretty damn tanky, 1.5k HP. He can definitely just stay in the front lines for a extended period of time, probably. He can certainly soak up the damage, but the control is starting to come online for Myth Trust. They had a very poor start, I think that's the most fair way of saying it. But we consider now, we've got these blinks online on the Brewmaster and the Centaur. Centaur's even got the mech, which is going to help them out to no end. On top of this, Lakels almost has his BKB. He's actually only 50 gold away from that. Their control and their items are starting to come online. Yeah, the Bristleback is looking pretty good at the moment. I mean, maybe KYT. I'm not too sure if actually Pipe would even be worth it. Just getting something like a Shiva's card might be better to clear off mm -hmm. any units. I would say the pipe is pretty much a guaranteed pickup by one of these players. You consider the amount of magic damage the puck has, and now they're going to find Bramese in the jungle, actually. Noki is there, Telekinesis as well. Forces the metamorph, the shapeshift even from Bramese, but is it going to be enough to escape this one? It seems to be so. Yeah, but now in comes the Vida. No, Disruptor didn't have proper vision to just glimpse anybody, keep them in place. I doubt they would want to take that fight anyway. Um, Vans and Speaker were too far back, in all honesty. They wouldn't have been able to turn and fight that one, especially with the Lycan being so low health. He had to fall back. He had no option. So, at the moment, Myth, they have the BKB on Lakelos, like you mentioned as well. Another 500 gold on top of that. Noki actually almost has his blink there, needs only 100 gold for it on the Rubik. So, they are getting the items to, in theory, just defend our team fight even. Well, the one thing I will point out you've got such a push heavy lineup from, uh, from Zero Latitude. They haven't even managed to get all the tier 2s down at this point, and now they're going to start rotating up to try to commit to the top tier 2, but in comes the defense. You've got uh, Lakels, who's already set up 
on the tower. Noki's here. My pro is now here as well. Do they have Primal Split? Yes, they do. They have pretty much everything they need to defend this, and there are only three members of Zero Latitude. If they go aggressive now, this could potentially be a few kills. Now I'm going to go straight onto Levita. BKB is popped over by Lakels, and that should be more than enough to finish off the uh, Disruptor. In the meantime, in the back of the fight, Primal Split comes in and they just obliterate the Shadow Shaman. He has no chance, and now Vans will be the final target. Thrown up into the air. He's not escaping this one, and there's no support coming in, no other rotations. Lycan doesn't want to get involved, and rightfully so. That's a three-for-nothing trade in favor of the Myth Trust. I mean, the only positive thing I see from that fight for Zero Latitude is... That the Death Prophet just purchased up his Yule Scepter before he died, just got the Void Stone from the Secret Shop. But other than that, Myth just... I don't think they could have asked for anything better at this point, and they might be able to even push the Tier 2 with this. Well, they could push the Tier 2, yes, but they've got to consider the Lycan is somewhere on the map, and so is the Puck looking for kills or split push. And they're going to find potentially a kill here on the SD. He's not going to be able to escape this one at all, especially under the, uh, the, uh, the Dream Coil. But now you've got Bramizi pushing this top, uh, sorry, bot lane, and he's going to be looking immediately for the tier three. And he's going to try to force rotations and TPs away, and he already has done. KYT is here. Can KYT defend this on his own? I don't think so, but you've already got Bristle back here, and Bramizi is wise to this. He's falling back immediately, not even committing the Necro two units. I mean, I actually would have thought like I'm just going to pop his own Necro book a little bit earlier before the TPs from the tier two actually came back by me. But well, if he just... did, he could have potentially brought that tower down. The Necro units do such a high amount of damage, but then again, it isn't a Necro 3 yet, and the jump between 2 and 3 is quite a large one. It most certainly is, and well, at the he, moment... He's actually had the Necro 3 to live in now, so... Well, he even has a 1.7k gold on top of that, just leaving the wolves actually to farm up the Ancients as well. Finally makes it there himself, and Puck, he's 140 all the way from his Necro level 2 as well. So I guess they just... Want to get as many Necro books as possible before going for like a proper 5v5 five, five push or do you actually think that they should maybe more look towards split pushing or is it a little bit too scary against the blink taggers of myth? I I don't think split pushing would be the right call there. They need to commit as five because they can team fight better than they can split push at this point. For the sole reason of if they look for split push, you mentioned the daggers. Those daggers are such a scary force in this game. Do you really want to be the uh, victim of a double blink from a centaur and a brewmaster? Honestly, no, Couch. Oh, I most certainly would not, but KYT actually, he gets scouted out, they get the blink hex on him instead. The ice blast is flying, but it's gonna hit maybe one here at best. The but now it comes the primal split though. The primal split is going to do everything. They're going to bring down Vaughn's and that's going to take exorcism off the board. And now they're going to look for the disruptor. The Lycan is however going to be trying to shred Noki, but he's going to be the next target for control. And now comes the turnaround. There will be a double kill up for Bramizi, but can they bring the Lycan down in time? The Pandas are going to time out any second, and now the Brewmaster standing alone against the entire lineup of Zero that are still alive, and Blink shackles from Speaker. That should be more than enough, but my pro gets some distance. Dagger disabled still. Should be safe. But still a 4 for 2 trade in favor of uh, Zero there. Yeah, just being able to blow up the center before he did much of anything, I mean, he got his Stampede activated, so. That was good enough. Tactic Storm from Zero Latitude was only used on almost a dead ancient operation as well. So both sides had something lacking in the team fight. But I mean, this Death Prophet, he was shut down hard early on and you can still feel it until up until this point because the Death Prophet, he, first of all he got focused, he was the only one getting hit by the Ice Blast and followed up by Thunderclap Primal Split. But still, this Death Prophet just isn't doing much of anything, but even without that, they were able to win a team fight quite heavily. I do believe they lost only Death Prophet and the Disruptor there. They did, and you can sort of see why. You look at the Death Prophet, she hasn't managed to tank up yet. She has a Yules to try to survive, but she doesn't have the health or the armor to survive. And that is the big problem here. The flip side of that coin, though, the Lycan, he has the health, he has the armor, and most importantly, he has the damage. And he is the driving force right now behind Zero Latitude. And you can understand why. I mean, I think both you and me were surprised the Lycan got so far through the banning and picking stage before it was dealt with. Yeah, especially considering the way that the draft started for Zero Latitude. But now you've got KYT. He's going to get hexed up and they're just going to blink and retreat. But in comes the AA Ice Blast. This could be a big impact if they can get the catcher and it only lands on Levita. And now they're going to turn around. Noki gets caught out by the glimpse and that should be more than enough. And now they're going to look for more. The Bristleback could be the easy target here, but where's the Lycan in all of this? In comes the blink hex. But in comes Stampede equally, and that's going to just bring everyone away. Now you've just got the Dream Coil there. 
But are they going to re-engage off the back of this? Do you really want to fight into a Death Prophet that has Exorcism up and a Lycan that is potentially retaining in now? The Wolves are starting to chip away and Burmese wants to go, but this is not going to be an easy fight. Then again, Roshan, they're in the vicinity of Roshan and he does respawn in 20 seconds. They could be posturing for that and it's a long ass respawn on that one. I think Myth, they in theory actually could take a fight. Master of Dwarves are on cooldown, Exorcism as well, Dream Coil also. I mean, so they really have only Shapeshift, which is mostly off cooldown anyway, and the Static Storm. So Myth, looking at the graphs, they're actually not as far behind as well. 4,000 gold only, about 6,000 XP now after that last fight in the top lane. But it is certainly recoverable, yes, by all means. But the question is, can they get the rate initiation with the daggers? Because if they don't catch the Disruptor, Static Storm will completely destroy any kind of fight. It has such a large range in the positional disruption that it causes, hence the name of the hero, I guess. <laughs> if they blink in and Static Storm is there, then you cannot then Primal Split. You can't double it, you can't stomp. It, it's a terrifying concept, in all honesty. Well, so far, we ha I think we've seen like one really good Static Storm, but other than that, we're just like focused on one hero. And of course, the Disruptor is pretty damn squishy himself, so hasn't been able to really survive for long enough to scout for the perfect opportunities. But still just a threat of being there. It's a little bit like a black hole, but oh, blink in, Dream Coil. Well, in comes the Stampede to try to counter-initiate this and the AA Ice Blast, but in comes the Storm. That lands on three, big double edge as well. But is it enough that the Static Storm is in the middle of this, stopping any kind of uh, aggression as a group? The team fight was split equally, though. You've got Bramizi chewing apart heroes on the back lines, even looking for SD inside the base. Bramizi, that's not your base, man. But he's going to go for SD anyway and does manage to pick it off. But now you've got MyPro coming in with the Primal Split. They're going to look to bring down Bramizi, and he doesn't have his shapeshift anymore. He is going to go down at this rate. But Lakels, in the meantime, is chewing apart heroes. Where is he? He was chewing apart everyone else. He brought down the, the Death Prophet, but can they finish off this Lycan? A few more hits, but you can see how damn tanky he is. Double Edge, Stomp, does clean them up. 740 gold going the way of KYT. And now do we have an option here to get some push on the cards? I think it'll still be rough to push in, considering you've got so much control still available for uh, Zero Latitude. Sure, they lack the damage, but they could commit Mass Serpent Wards to defend towers as well. I mean, all in all, in the end, looks like it was a rather even exchange. A little bit better for Myth, since they did get both the Lycan and, of course, ending the spree. Lots of call going for KYT on the center order. there. But a free for free, both sides had one buyback as well. One on the Brewmaster, one on the Shadow Shaman. But this buyback on the Brewmaster actually set back his Agarim Scepter a little bit. So. I can I can see the trade being much worth it though. They killed the like and got a spree, and that's helped the centaur get closer towards that all-important BKB, which is going to pretty much render Static Storm useless until, and this is a big if, Levida gets an Agonims. And you've got to consider an Agonims on a disruptor is an AoE doom essentially. Yeah, it's. I mean, having a BKB is always going to be nice against a Static Storm, even against the puck. To be honest, to be able to just run out of the Dream Coil and. Not be afraid of just getting damaged or stunned. Mm. Very true. The BKBs are going to be very important for this. Thing is, they're equally going to need something to deal with Bramesian. Bramesian's BKB is on a 10 second duration. He's not even used it yet, so the Lycan is in a good uh, good shape. But equally, in comes the initiation. They're going to just bring down that puck. He gets caught out under the gem, and he should have known the gem changed hands. So that's going to be a good advantage going into a potential Roshan fight here for Myth, should they want to take Roche. And you can just see the massive fallbacks from the entire lineup of Zero Latitude without their puck. And are they going to just let Roshan fall, I wonder, and give Myth a free one? I mean, at the moment, it sure looks like it. Maybe they just uh, are going to do the age-old tier 2 for Roshan at the moment. I mean, it's only down to quarter of an HP, the tower in this top lane. But Roshan, True. it's dropping pretty fast. Yeah, this is the negative armor that Lakels offers, and you're already seeing the TP start to head up to this top lane. They'll probably put this onto the uh, Bristleback, and they certainly will. Now you get the TPs up to defend this, and they're not even going to get the tier 2 in exchange here. So Speaker and the Vans are unfortunately wasting time at this point. And time is something Vans still needs. He's going for a Yule set, sorry, an Atos. It's going to help him tank up, but honestly, I'm beginning to feel like the Death Prophet needs either a Heart or maybe a BKB. I actually think BKB probably would potentially even be the better choice. Mm. Although at this point in time, the Bristleback's physical damage is actually becoming a real threat. And if he has enough Warpath stacks on, when they were doing Roshan, he had at least seven of them. 
So he was running at pretty much hasted movement speed and he was hitting for about 400 damage altogether. So oh, we did you... see the Sanjin and the Asha pick up as well onto Lakels. That's another interesting choice with the Bristleback. Generally we would see an AC instead of a, uh, an SNY. Man, if they got an AC, it would be such a great item pick up to be honest. Reduce mm. the Exorcism damage, reduce Mass Serpent Ward, help out with your own damage of course. Exactly. But then again, I suppose the one benefit of S and Y, at least uh, the lot of pro players seem to have the uh, mindset of, it's a great item because it's so cheap. You can get it from behind quite easily. It just That's actually a really valid point as well. It just The parts of it cost so little. I mean, 1000 is the most expensive part for it. But Haste Rune, they're going to still pick it up. They had sentry wards, so they were rather certain that there are no enemy, is no enemy vision there. Mm. But this smoke doesn't look to be finding anything for them. But looking at the graphs now, the gold graph is, well, more or less just completely zeroed out by now. XP only like a 3,000 lead for zero latitude as well. So to be honest, with the kind of lineup that they had, 33 minutes in, and the way they had a lead at some point, I was expecting zero latitude to have been able to just GG this game already. I would agree. I was expecting much more impact from Zero Latitude's lineup. They have a Lycan and a Death Prophet, for Christ's sake. That says impact early towers. But Myth have weathered the storm. And when you get past the point where you can hold your towers against a push heavy lineup, you tend to have the scales start to tip in your favor. And Myth are certainly showing that. They can team fight fairly well. However, they now need to be very careful because in comes a death ball for their tier 3 tower. So we need mass, mass TPs to defend this, in all honesty. So if they commit to this tower and they're not here already, it's going to potentially fall by the time they TP the base. Now you get the mass servant wards and the exorcism commit. In comes my pro, however. Stampede to go. Primal split. What are they going to go for? They're going to focus on speaker. And in comes a long range ice blast. That's going to shred uh, Vars. And he will go down regardless now. But on the back foot of this fight, you've got Bramizi messing around. He can't kill anyone yet. And now he's trying to go up versus KYT. And KYT can mess around with the Lycan. Force him out for now. But on the, in the center of this fight, we do have the Puck. Puck does try to get away. Silences out KYT though. In the meantime, Myth Pro picks up the double. And then now you get a stomp thrown, looking for uh, Zangan, but he will escape this one. And Lycan TP's out to safety as well. So that's a three for nothing trade in favor of Myth. This is exactly what Myth needed. Well, at least you're related to They did get actually finish off the tier three tower here, but I mean, that's definitely not a worthy trade. And look at this Lycan. He picked up a blink dagger now. Yeah, I, I looked at that and thought, what the hell? What did Divinity's Edge is the blink for? I, I honestly don't know with that one. This must mean like Zero Latitude, they're actually not confident anymore in just taking fights or anything. They want to rat this out and I mean to be honest, if Zero Latitude end up... What? Puck, he's gonna go down as well. He gets the Blink Illusion as well. Oh man. Easy he's really in the trees though, but Blink available in one second. Can he get it this Blink stomp in time? No, he can't unfortunately. In the meantime, AA does finish that up with the Ice Blast that I didn't actually see impact. I guess that was just a glitch on my side. Yeah, I mean, maybe actually SD just sent it to the base already. Uh, yeah, the that, TP that's a possible. I, I didn't see it thrown in the fight, so yeah, it must have been predicted there by the ancient apparition. I'm sure someone in chat will yell at us and tell us. Oh man, but this game, if they're holding on, just like heroes at the moment, they use Stampede as well, but Shapeshift comes out from Lycan. Yep, move speeds are now equal. Now you get the blink into the trees, and well, <laughs> I suppose that's what the blink's for. You're playing it as like. Uh, split push Tinker, you have a blink so you can blink the trees and just continue your siege. I really liked where he blinked though as well. He was running completely to the left side, but he actually blinked into the trees towards the dire side, so even if there would have mind been games. a blink on Centaur, it was like mind games. Yeah. And we do get that AC pickup from Lakels now, uh, after the SNY, after the BKB, and with that up now, I believe it's still on the courier areas, uh, with the AC, the physical damage coming out of Mythcrust is going to start to add up horrifically. Oh wow, this this game is actually going to be somewhat hard now for Zero Latitude. I mean, it's almost even, still gold, pretty much zeroed out XP, actually now about 4000 in Myth's favor. Both the Lycan and the Bristleback are equally farmed. But Lycan, going for the Blink Dagger, so not going for the carry-ish kind of Lycan at all. The late game isn't actually that strong all of a sudden, considering that the Death Prophet is just so far behind as it is as well. It's Whereas a lot the Bristleback is just... Bristleback is huge already, almost. 
that Bristleback is effectively a monster at this point. We, if we look at the net worth, the Bristleback has 17,000 net worth in terms of all items built to tank up and to deal physical damage. The Lycan, and as we see another Stampede, they're going to look for Levita, and they will catch him with that. In comes the uh, Static Storm to try to just force something, and they do force a BKB for it, and kill goes away of KYT, but as I was saying, we do have a 17,000 gold lead, uh, golds on the Lycan in terms of net worth, but what's he got? He's got a BKB, which doesn't really add too much to his damages for survivability. He's got a Necro 3 for push, and he's got a Blink Dagger to escape with, plus the lads, obviously. And now KYT's going to TP out. There's going to be no chance of him getting caught there. As you say, Bramizi, he just has a lot less in terms of physical damage. Equally, though, Primal Split is commit, and they catch the Death Prophet as well on that bottom lane. It, it's a scary force. Now you get the Stomp Initiation onto Bramizi. They're going to be able to bring him down if they're not careful here. Does he have a Shapeshift? Yes, he does. But look, they're going to focus on the Necro units. The wisest choice. They deal so much damage, and now you've got Orbs flying in as well, but everyone's just blinking away. This is essentially a rat lichen. He's not a wolf anymore. He is literally a rat. But Noki catches him out, forces the BKB, TPs away. He's going to be able to escape this one, but that's a lot of investment just to escape a team fight. You mean, to be honest, they did get a decent amount of damage or building damage done overall. I mean, tier 3 almost down top lane. They got the range racks pretty low as well on the bottom lane. And thank god that the Shadow Shaman didn't use his Master of Edwards. Actually, Noki gets the telekinesis in the shapeshift form, which is told. Kinetic field is there though. But I'm not sure Spiker, he's gonna go down for sure, I think. Yeah, there's just too much damage coming in, especially now the Kells is here. Equally though, the Vita does send him back with a glimpse, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The Wolves, however, might kill Noki, but in comes the Bristleback. He is going to shred Levita as soon as he gets on target. They lose the Rubik, sure, but one right click, two, three, four, and that's a dead Disruptor. Not a chance of surviving that. And that was only with four Warpath stacks, I will point out. He can get many, many more. Holy crap, I mean, 29 to 28 now is the kill score myth. They are actually holding on and pretty admirably so as well. And not even holding on, just even gaining an advantage by this point. And this Death Prophet just isn't catching up at all. Has the Road of Fatal finished for some time now. But he really needs to just tank up a lot further. Well, but even if he goes for hard now, I mean, but the minus then... armor aspect of just the Bristleback might still be enough to bring down the Death Prophet even with the heart. Mm. Well, even with a heart, you consider the negative armor. This is, I believe, five negative armor as an aura around the the, uh, the Bristleback, yeah? You consider there is seven armor total on Vance. And that's before you start throwing Nasal Goo, which I believe reduces two armor per stack at this point. And I can't see Death Prophet surviving. She just doesn't have anything. She needs a Shiva's Guard, in all honesty, as well. She needs two tier three items. You mean maybe, just maybe, if the Lycan had an ACO of himself? So, would be able to counteract at least the Bristlebacks as well, Kuras, but even so, wow, this, this game is a lot harder than it should have or could have been. But looking at the graphs, again, 40 minutes in now, Myth, they're actually 10k XP ahead, 2,500 in gold only, but mid lane, can they get a kill? No, my pro, he's there with the enemy rune. And oh man, this, this is going to be epic bait. Yep, Vans comes in, in but there's the Primal Split. They're going to look straight for Vans. The, the Static Storm wasted and down goes the Death Prophet. Cannot stand versus that level of damage. And now they're going to look for Levita. He steals Thunderstorm and unfortunately doesn't quite get the glimpse. And doesn't matter. Thrown up into the air by the Primal Split. And now that's a dead Disruptor. Glimpse to send back SD, but he does not care. And even KYT coming in just to ensure the kill. But now you've got uh, Zuragan. He's lurking nearby. Is he going to be the next target? Everyone knows he's here. He almost catches the courier, but Yule's into the air from Noki and forces the blink aggressively into the base. He's looking desperately for the courier and will TP away to safety. Or will he? SD comes in. Yule's scepter again. Catches him. TP's now on cooldown. This puck is essentially dead. Throwing the Ice Blast even on the sidelines just to ensure it, but it doesn't matter. It gets caught with the cold fleet. One big right click the coming in, but he's still has to escape and does manage to do so but while this was going on as you say the racks are going down that's tier that's a full set of racks off the back of this one surely can they stop the melee racks going down i wonder the wolf is dead but the necro three units are still present the equally arc. though puck manages to kill them uh, rubik killed the necro three didn't he yeah it sure felt like it at the moment so that was just puck space created there's no way to put it i thought like he's on a suicide mission but SD going for the Yule Scepter and the Puck, uh, stopping the TP actually worked out against them. Otherwise, Puck would have been back home. At the base. Wouldn't have activated the Necro 3. They might have a, not have lost the rack. So, I mean, 
Oh god. Although I have to commend Myth overall for the for the right amortization, both the Ancient Apparition and the Ruby going for the Evil Scepter. Other than that, they didn't have too much to actually stop TPs, but now they do. They have plenty in all honesty to stop TPs at this point in. But now it's going to be the third Roshan of the game, so that all important cheese will go onto the deck as well. And you can see how quickly Roshan just melts. There is no way to stop this. And now comes the question, where's the next fight going to go? Brumizi tries to go for another tier 3, almost catches it, but will fall instead. And that tier 3 stands with 19 health. Twist like, and that that was a little bit uh, too deep by him. Look at Lakel, he's so damn speedy, almost yep. tasted. Oh. Actually, PKB activated, he's gonna go for the disruptor. A few more right clicks, no, it's not gonna be enough. He won't be managing able to bring him down from full health, not in the time a TP takes, unfortunately, but equally, you got Goo being thrown. Zuragan gets forced back, and you can see Myth are starting to exert their pressure on the map. As long as they have the ability to TP and defend, they can start sieging the enemy base in all honesty. And we can see that is exactly what they're thinking. We've got travels on Bristleback. We've got travels on Brewmaster. They want to be able to defend and move around the map as much as humanly possible. And the level of aggression they can now get off the back of just two boots of travel, it worries me. It seriously worries me. Equally though, Lakel is going to start chipping on a tier 3 of his own. And comes the question, can they kill off the tier 3? In the meantime, they, they managed to kill off the Shadow Shaman once more with the Promised Blood. Hmm. Yet, oh, the glimpse of the center! <laughs> Back to his own jungle he goes. But in the meantime, in comes an AA blast, gonna land onto Vans, and now we get the turnaround. Look for Vans, maybe. Nope, Yule's up onto the Bristle back. They don't want the Bristle getting any excess damage on anyone, but it does not matter. The tier 3 is gonna fall. Last second fortification, that's down for five minutes now, but still, the T3 will go down. There's no stop again, and now they're looking for the racks, but Lycan is now alive. And the question is, can Lycan hold this? I don't think he can and exploding the Disruptor in the meantime. I think the momentum has completely gone out of Zero Latitude sails right now. One set of racks, will they go for more here? That's the question. Lakel certainly wants to go for more. He might even go for the tier fours and Vans being forced all the way back to the base. Double stop comes through and a kill with that double edge. Make that two kills. Lakel's is unstoppable. So is KYT. Now you've got Bramizi, BKB trying to survive, but he's not going to be able to hold this on his own. With Zurigan though, maybe, they catch the three with the full Dream Coil, and now you've got Vans coming in with that all-important exorcism, but can they finish off anyone? They bring down the Bristleback, but he has the Aegis. He's going to come back into this one. My pro is full health. You've got the uh, Central. He's going to be in his BKB and fairly healthy as well. But now in comes the Stomp. Doesn't connect on anyone, but it does not matter. Down goes the Shadow Shaman. Now looking for the Death Prophet, and the Death Prophet won't be able to stand either. There's no effort to split this either. There are no travels on the side of Zero Latitude. They will lose two more off the back of buybacks, and they're going to clean up the, the Serpent Wards and then potentially go for the Tier 3 or maybe even the Tier 4. So they have the ability to and it's only a matter of time in my mind before Myth take the Ancient. Wow, looks like they actually did it. They actually came back into this game and Zero Latitude. Was it the case of them just not pushing enough early on or, in, or just the Death Prophet getting shut down early from the get-go and Myth? Excellent plays all around, great itemization and just pushing out every single lane to make sure Zero Latitude can't just split push. I completely agree with you. I think it was just a shutdown uh, on the Death Prophet and from there the great itemization from Mithras. They knew exactly what they needed to do and they certainly performed this time. As the Ancient Falls, game one of this series goes the way of Myth, but there is a game number two to be played, I believe. Yes, most certainly is, guys. So. If you want to see more action and actually want to know the proper outcome of this two game series then don't go anywhere it's gonna come up in probably just a couple minutes time so we're gonna head straight into that no big talks about it and of course thank you so much for watching everybody if you enjoyed be sure to follow us on all the links below the streams the social media the twitch channels and of course big thanks to black Adder for casting with me a pleasure and i look forward to game number two yes guys so see you in a couple of minutes